Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys. Oh boy. Hey guys, today is review time. So some time ago I stumbled upon a game trailer which immediately caught my eye. And um, yeah, because it was like released in just a few days, it went to my Steam wishlist and I totally forgot about it. Then sometime during the pandemic, the Steam sale came around the corner and I couldn't refuse to buy it. So here we are. So I decided to make a Let's Play, which you can find on my channel here. And after that, I decided to review it. The first part will be spoiler free. And then in the end, there will be a small part where I talk about some little specific things that may contain spoilers. And if you haven't played the game, you can skip this part. This will be my own personal opinion about the game. But before we come to that, let's look at some facts. If you already know my channel and the Let's Play, you know the game we're talking about is Chicken Police Painted Red. The game is a point and click body cop adventure, film noir style. Its genres are adventure and indie, and it came out on the 5th of November 2020. The developer are the White Gentlemen. They were founded in 2018 and are a mix of people who worked on projects like The Witcher or Call of Duty, uh, who decided to make games together. Chicken Police is until now their first and only game. You can play the game on PlayStation, Xbox, PC, even on the Switch, and even on Android and iOS, which I was like... Even Android? I was surprised and I looked it up and it's the same game, just small. <laughs> the price of the game is uh, 19.99 euros and I think I got it on sale for like 12 euros or something like that. The game is synchronized only in English, but there are subtitles available in eight different languages. The usual playtime is about seven to nine hours. I played 20. <laughs> But I'm a completionist and I like to get in every detail, try to have a conversation with every of the characters and I talk a lot. So if you have watched the Let's Play, I tend to wander off a bit. <laughs> I don't know if Natasha is really the victim here or if we like discover something a whole different than that. And I think it's very cool that they have a demo up on Steam, which uh, you can download and just, you know, try it out. Okay, let's get to the game itself. Welcome to Clawl. In Chicken Police, we will dive into the dark and mysterious world of the city of Clawl. Clawl is a big city in the world referred to as the wilderness. The inhabitants of the world are hybrids of humans and animals. Therefore, there are some yeah, conflicts that lie in the... <laughs> Nature of nature. But I've never been into cats, you know. As a dog. Kitten. We are playing as Santino Sonny Featherland, who is an old, burned out and almost retired cop. On one night we are visited by a mysterious lady with an even more mysterious case for us. And we can't go on this adventure on our own. So we pay a visit to our young and enthusiastic partner Marty McChicken. Yeah, that's his name. <laughs> At first he's not that convinced. We had our little arguments in the past. But um, in the end, he's willing to revive our dynamic duo called the Chicken Police again. Okay, now we're going through some aspects which you get my personal opinion about. And since we need a rating system, I will introduce the Chicken Scale. And you can get a total of 5 out of 5 chicken. That's the rating. Yeah. <laughs> and please appreciate my self drawn chicken here, okay? I'm a sucker for mystery and detective stories. So of course I was drawn to that film noir style game with this fancy chicken with a gun and a trench coat. I mean, who wouldn't, right? <laughs> the story of the game is mainly about that case we take on in the very first sequence of the game. Which is very blurry and not that specific in the beginning. And to be honest, I wasn't exactly sure what I had to do for like two or three hours into the game. <laughs> I mean... She like orders us here and doesn't tell us what we should do. <laughs> Which was not that bad because the game leads you to the bigger things that are about to happen if you let it do that. I mean you could rush through the story in a few hours but you have the chance to explore the backgrounds of the world the story takes place in. Which I really appreciate in the game. 
Aside from the main story, there are so many little bits and pieces you can discover. You have a little notebook that collects information and even explains certain historical events or social constructs that are mentioned in the conversations. I feel like this is a very clever way of implementing the world building into the game, because it's not forced on the player. You don't have to go ahead and read every little detail in your notebook to know what's going on in the main story. I am a I have to know every little detail of this game kind of player, so it really caught me in a way that fascinated me in aspects that popped up here and there and I hadn't... I didn't expect that. Without really spoiling anything, I can say I was surprised that topics like racism were referred to. And I think this only shows the level of thought the developers, developers <laughs> uh, put into the aspect of world building here. Same goes for the characters, very unique and developed. You even have a separate section for notes on the characters in your book as well. I really liked how the characters were like intertwined with each other, especially the main characters, they're back and forth. And one or two side characters I happen to uh, develop stronger feelings for. <laughs> okay, let's get back to the main point I was trying to make here. As the main story unfolds, you discover more layers and impacts to our initial case. We will quickly notice that there are more parties involved and not everybody is pleased that we put our nose or beak or snout in their business. <laughs> there will be twists, turns, deceit and danger. There were plot points that I could definitely not see coming. I mean, some I was expecting through the incredible ability of deduction. I think this is my breakthrough as an uh, investigator here. And there were some things I was totally wrong about. I don't believe that he's innocent. He's, he's the evil mastermind behind it. Along the way I didn't have the feeling that the plot points were too far-fetched or too obvious. Because the more you get to know, the sooner or later you can puzzle the pieces together yourself. To be honest, I didn't expect the story to branch out like it did. But in the end, I was very happy that it wasn't just a generic murder story like every other. And again, this is my personal opinion and as far as the story is concerned, I was hooked to the point where I couldn't stop playing. It is a long recording session here, but I'm, I can't just quit the game. I, I can't stop. It's too it's good. Right. And if this is not a good sign, I don't know what is. So this is a full 5 out of 5 chicken for me. I think they did a great job at creating a consistent and authentic atmosphere throughout the whole game. And I think that's where the love of detail really shines and make this world really coherent in itself. For me, it's some little details that convey emotions like pictures of his family on Sonny's wall or just little comments that make me laugh. This is, know what's uh, this is on one of him. the most beautiful memories from my old life before Molly left oh, me no. and took our daughter. The sound design was very nice. And I mean, at some point, I just wanted to rip off my headphones because the, the whole scenery was just creeping me out. The sound, oh my god, it gives me the creeps in here. Let's, let's get out of here. Although the game being really dark and literally not very colorful and bright, it surprised me with such a humor. I mean, yes, there were many bad animal puns. She bears with him. But a lot of good ones too. And the sarcastic way Sonny and Marty deal with each other, it was just hilarious. Don't drink that shit, Marty. It's bad for your health. Sonny, you're bad for my health. The sarcastic or sometimes even cynical tone of Sonny and Marty sort of diffused the seriousness of it all, without making it look silly at all. One thing I have to criticize is that the pace of the game is very slow in the beginning. Later on, the pace of the events just dragged me into the story way more. It felt a bit disoriented in the beginning and I think that could have been maybe solved a little better. I really liked the feeling of the game, but at some point I feel like it could have been a bit more adventurous or that you get the feeling that you're running out of time. It could use more of the thrill of, oh shit, things are on fire and hell's breaking loose. Overall, I would rate this a 4 out of 5 chicken because I think there's a little room for improvement. Not much, but a little. The most obvious thing here is that the game is black and white. I mean, it would be strange otherwise for a film noir style game. 
some rare objects do still have their color, but it's never actually explained why. I find it interesting that the characters are well aware of the fact that the color is gone, and that it hasn't been like that forever. But that mystery shall not be revealed. The game is a two and a half D point and click adventure. Means you have this parallax effect when you look around, which creates a depth effect. It's a cool effect and I think it's a cool alternative to a full 3D view, where you can walk around, which is far more work by the way, and a simple 2D view, where everything is just static. I looked at some behind the scenes footage and many of their sets were actually built in 3D and characters were placed in the scene as sort of cardboard cutouts. The animation of the characters, whether in the scenes, dialogue or the cutscenes, is rather simple and often subtle, but still very expressive. I do really like this way of making stylized games, because I think it showcases creativity more than aiming for a realistic style. Not that I don't like those, I just love seeing diversity in style, you know? I naturally stalked all social media accounts of the wild gentleman, and I stumbled over this gem on their Twitter account, and I think we can all agree that we are glad about the outcome of this look development. Okay, so it seems that I just forgot to tell you my rating for this aspect of the game. And as you could expect, it's 5 out of 5 chicken. The gameplay is not very special here. It's not outstanding or new, but it's solid. It does what a point and click adventure should do. I must say that I really enjoyed the questioning and investigation mechanisms. The questioning was either too challenging or I was just way too dumb for it. Oh! <laughs> But I don't think that really affected my game. The mechanisms were fun, but you couldn't do that much harm with them. There were a couple of fun little shooting sequences, where I was just too dumb to figure out the reloading mechanism, but that one's on me, so. I did not come across any bugs, except for that little one entry in my notebook that wouldn't appear for whatever reason. <sighs> That, that's something that like grinds my gears like every time. The game did run perfectly on my PC, but it doesn't require that much. You don't need a high-end gaming station to run the game. The only thing that bugged me a little was some situations or things I couldn't go back to because I triggered um, something and the story moved on and I couldn't go back. I'm gonna make a deal here. I'm gonna exit the game. If I can replay the mural scene, we will stop there uh, real quick. Goodbye, doctor. No. <laughs> I was a bit sad because there was one riddle I couldn't solve because of that and that hurts my little perfectionist heart. <laughs> Since almost everything worked the way it should, there was no confusion with controls or how the game should work, I will give it 5 out of 5 chicken. The game did a good job guiding you through the story. There were no dead ends and you could not destroy your whole case by busting your questionings, which I was very grateful for. You could get more or less information out of them, but that's about it. Therefore, the game is not that difficult that you have to quit because you don't know what to do or where to go. You have to pick up certain clues to move on. But that's nothing a bit detective work at all. Always. So for this rating, I will go with a 2.5 out of 5 chickens, because it's not always good if a game is 5 out of 5 difficult. It was medium and that was totally okay. Okay, let's come to some specific things where I talk about personal preferences and questions left unsolved. If you haven't played the game yet or don't want any spoilers, you can skip to this time. Although I liked Sunny's mood and his cynical comments, my personal hero is Dr. Bubo. Maybe I have a thing for sketchy characters, but I think he's the most bizarre and quirky character in the game. His hilarious relationship with his wife Ursula made me laugh so much and he has such a fun dynamic with Sonia and Marty. Another character I quite liked was Zip, but maybe that's just because I love trash pandas. Hello to you too, Zip. Hello again, it, <laughs> it is. <laughs> I had no problems until now. Ah, oh, don't be Sorry. such a drama queen. He has his little paws and more dark affairs than we might expect, but I believe deep down he's a good guy who keeps getting dragged in shady business. On the other hand, I was not the biggest fan of Natasha. I mean, I get it, she's mysterious and so on, but in the beginning it was quite some work to get information out of her, which is strange because she hired us to investigate, but didn't tell us what. <laughs> in the end, I think she could have given us more to work with without being too obvious or too sketchy to Ibn. And yeah, there were some things I didn't completely understand in the end. For example, the whole thing with Sunny's wife or ex-wife. Molly. 
Yeah, it was a sad story which belonged to Sonny, but it almost felt as if she would play a bigger role in the story than she did in the end. Maybe it was just build up because in the end credit scene she actually reaches out to us. And we don't know if there will be a part 2 and they just wanted to leave some options for them to work with. And now for the only thing that will probably haunt me forever, my dear friend Louis. I was so sure about him being the evil super brain behind all this. Because he was always there and being super sketchy. I mean that was supposed to be a red herring and I totally fell for it. Which means they did a good job misleading me. Congrats, you got me. So, if you couldn't already tell, I really enjoyed that game. I'm a sucker for dark detective stories and funny animals, sarcasm and interesting visuals, so maybe this just hit the mark for me. All in all, the game got a 5.75 out of 5 chicken for me. There were some minor things that bugged me, but all in all, this was a really good experience. I would be really thrilled if they produce at least one more game of this series. If you're interested in the game, there's a demo available, go check it out. Or watch my Let's Play if you haven't already done that. I try to be funny, I promise. So the bar is very high for what it's coming next. I had a lot of fun creating this Let's Play and this review, and I'm very curious for what's about to come next. I hope you enjoyed my personal review of Chicken Police Painted Red, and I will definitely plan to do more reviews that was fun. So stay tuned. Have a nice day, and until then, bye! With this fancy, fancy, 